so I've picked up a Flex 3000 and there it is um, everything's installed uh, the only problem I had was um, getting the right lead which is there that's a 4 pin fire wire and into the back of the Flex 3000 it's a 6 pin so that's what I needed a 6 to 4 pin and the one I had was a 6 pin to 6 pin so I had to wait to get that took probably about uh, 4 days uh, but besides that, um, when you install the software, which I did, which was version 272, um, make sure when all the drivers are in, um, I think it's about three different parts of the program that it actually puts in and puts icons on your desktop. Just to show you roughly what I'm talking about. Uh, Flex 3000, here we go. So what you get, the per SDR data transfer, your radio flex, that shortcut there, and this one here is actually for your driver. And there's your per SDR 272. Um, so normally if you read the documents and that which I did, because it's a new radio so I need to know a little bit more about it <coughs> um, it comes up and says that the drive is installed which is fine uh, but something else it didn't say anything about when it was installing the drivers or the second time I tried to install it because first of all I put two seven uh, sorry two five three on the power SDR and it wouldn't actually recognize it because uh, you click on let me just turn the flex on so the flex is just being turned on now and you know because of this light here and then what you do you go up to where it says flex so you click on that uh, flex radio and you should get this box coming up hopefully it'll work yeah right should get this box up and um, every time I didn't get this box so every time I, I tried to load it up it just come up in a little square box couldn't find anything so um, I installed uh, 272 because uh, 253 come with the radio so I installed the latest one uh, once I got 253 working then updated to the latest one but it has to put a mini driver in, a MIDI. So when it actually puts the driver in and everything, just make sure uh, when you turn the radio on, uh, just before you go in. So you've installed all the software and everything, everything's gone in right. So you've got this program, Power SDR data transfer, you've got the Flex radio, and the Power SDR, whatever version you put in. So you turn the radio on, uh, like I've just done here. Just press the button there and then all of a sudden down at the bottom here it'll come up and say installing uh, another driver so on that driver it should say something about a MIDI M-I-D-I so it's a MIDI driver it's got to install I'm on Windows XP uh, professional so once that installed everything worked like I just showed you on there when I clicked on the flex radio um, that fully come up and uh, if you go on YouTube do a search for uh, flex radio stuff you will get some information uh, it's alright I'm just trying to find it at the moment then I can give you the right information uh, to do it it's a G7 um, once I find this call sign then I can actually tell you so it's um, where are we it's got to find some video files um, where are we 600 
yeah, Power SDR 2.6.4. You do a search for that um, on YouTube. Um, I'm just doing that now. I've just got it. Got the video. And um, I'm now moving it across to here. And as I say, G7CNF, that's who it's done by. Uh, look at all these videos, it'll show you how to set everything up. So that's all you need. Let's just uh, stop that. So once you've uh, gone through setting everything up on your, your own laptop or computer, whatever it is you're going to use, then go to YouTube and find the videos from G7 Charlie November Foxtrot and look at these videos he'll actually go through as you can see there setting all up uh, the drivers and then actually loading uh, power SDR up and telling you roughly um, about the setup so I'll click on this now power SDR so once you've actually been through um, his settings then away you go, you can go and play around on your flex. The only th other thing I've got to do at the moment are the com ports. I've done the uh, uh, audio um, cables and everything. It's uh, not audio cables that you get. Um, it's these virtual audio cables. So I've just installed DD Utils version 3. I've already got a uh, VSP manager that's uh, been sorted and uh, control cable, uh, was it control panel? So they're for your audio, ca uh, audio cables on there. So I've done that so I can uh, actually receive SSTV or whatever else, digital modes I want to. But at the moment I've not got the COM port set up uh, correctly because uh, I want to set it up and uh, use it with uh, Log4OM. So, this is now set up, here you go, don't want it on 20 meters, want it on uh, 40 or even 80. Let me just switch over because what I've done, I've got uh, it set up at the minute on a little switch here. So from my 991. Um, onto the flex. So here we go. So hopefully now I can get some uh, good signals. So all of this is working. It's all set up as I want it. Um, I've been playing around with the uh, um, EQs for the TX. I've not done the uh, RX EQs at the moment to see what I actually want to receive everything like. Um, there's loads you can play around with. I'm not going to go into it all because um, our G7CNF, he goes through the majority of it. You just go up to setup. And in here, you've got your different options and all the rest audio. Uh, your VAC one, that's where I've actually set up um, the VAC part so I can actually do um, digital modes and all the rest of it. So just make sure you keep an eye on your gain if you're doing your VAC modes. It's the only way I could actually change my audio on Windows XP uh, on the received audio because it was just uh, too much for my SSTV program, MMS STV. Just was um, overloaded. So I have to come back on here, go on to the RX and then just knock it down to minus 6 and it all works. So every time you've done something, let me just turn this down. So every time you've, you've done something on here, make sure, it's probably easier for you anyway, but make sure, export a database. So apply, copy, ex uh, export your database because then if anything goes wrong, 
and you have to revert back to uh, your defaults then at least uh, you've backed everything up so then you just import them back in and away you go you're back to normal so I nearly I keep mine all all the time in a, a, a database backup Uh, for speci uh, specific versions, so I've got two versions on you, and I've got two, four, six, eight backups at the minute. I've got nine now because I've just uh, did a little bit of tweaking on it. There's lots to do. Like I say, there's absolutely loads. In the end, it depends what you want to do on your Flex. But uh, Flex 2000 is a very nice uh, radio. Uh, you can do a lot with it. Um, I like going in and seeing what people's uh, audio and the settings and what they're actually doing. Um, but it is a nice radio, so it's like anything. It's down to what you actually want to use and do with your radio equipment. So, that's just um, one of my radios that I play around with. My other one's my uh, 991. Another very nice radio. Especially for fusion. There uh, you can do lots. And um, because I'm also running a um, YZX uh, digital node as well. That's there. So uh, that's my wires X connections at the moment. Uh, 35 connections on there. And that works very well. But I like playing on the on the flex. Seeing what the audio is like. And everything's working so far. So just an update at the moment. Um, next one is probably going to be on my um, Fusion stuff. I've got a FT400, FT2D, uh, the uh, handheld, and the 991, and uh, they're all very good radios. So like I say, it just depends what you like to play with. There's too much in the, the hobby of ham radio, too much you can do. Okay, thanks guys. Hope to see you on my channel sometime. Remember 0 AOV.